Welcome to Getting Good at Godot Part 9, the most web slaying tutorial for Godot on the internet. In this tutorial, we're going to get into sound effects and music. This is also going to be super short, seeing as I don't actually have a lot to say about this. Uh, unfortunately, Godot doesn't pack any sample sound effects with an empty project like it does with Icon, but I'm going to be using a few files of my own. Uh, you can download these from Mediafire, and I'll put a link in the description for you. Okay, so in Godot 2.1, there are two separate ways to play sound effects. One of these is by using samples, and the other is by using streams. Samples are designed to be played very quickly, a lot of times, and often. This might include things like bullet shots, jumping sound effects, footsteps, or anything of that nature. Streams are the opposite. They're designed to be played less frequently, but for longer. Usually the stream player is made for playing music. Okay, so let's get started. First, we can add a sample player node to the scene. And one thing to point out is that this is not the same thing as a sample player 2D. A sample player 2D is positional sound, so it'll it'll pan the audio depending on where it is relative to the camera. We don't really want this, seeing as you know this this game doesn't need it. You could use it if you want, but we're not going to because it sounds horrible. Um, so you can go down here to samples, new sample library, the error. You can open and open gun shoot. You can press this. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a sound effect. So that's pretty good. So now we can go back up here. And for the record, yes, I made this using uh, my, my, own, uh, my own mouth and, and, uh, messed with it all that, on, in, and messed with it in Audacity for a while. Go back to player here. And now just, like, one line here. Uh, let's keep it under when it's being spawned. Let's make the sample player play the sound, so you can just to get no sample player dot play, and then the name of the sound effect, which was in our case gun shoot, and hopefully there we go, making an explosive entrance to the scene. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Onto the stream player, if we add a stream player, again let's not do spatial stream player, because uh, that is for 3D stream player. Let's set the stream, let's load. These poles are safe with me. And we just have to press autoplay and maybe loop. Um, why not? There we go, we have a wonderful audio experience. And that's really it. Now, that, that wraps up this tutorial. Stay tuned for... Okay, so for now we're going to take a step back. Remember back in part 7 on instancing and that I said instancing was easy? I want to retract that statement. Only continue watching if you're really confident you know what I'm doing. Also, there's an announcement at the end, so continue watching either way. Also, correct me if I'm being an idiot. Instancing is very easy to do if you're starting out, but once you get into the messy realms of scene inheritance and resource sharing, good luck. To put it simply, if you instance two of the same node, they'll usually opt to share the same resources. So, for example, a sprite's texture resource. That means if you change the resource, it'll change all instances of this resource. To avoid this, it seems you'll have to call dot duplicate on a known copy of the resource, then manually set that resource to the duplicated copy in the new instance. Okay, so at least that's the concept behind it. I've no idea if that'll hold up when 3.0 comes along. Either way, good luck. And again, don't don't worry, I just wanted to mention that last bit because I don't particularly understand it very well. Alright, so this is an announcement video now. Uh, this series is coming to a temporary end. I was never and I'm not a tutorial guy, and in fact I'm notoriously bad at explaining things, so trust me, if you enjoy this content, you'll love my primary stuff. I will be coming back, and I might even publish some uh, extra parts, just definitely not daily, seeing as I have other things to do. Um, either way, you now know everything you need to make a solid start with Godot, but even if you don't, I'll be back soon with some more tutorials, probably next month. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.